Hello, YouTubers. This is the Nubifier. It's Friday, and that means Star Citizen Live with John Crew and Todd Pappy. Here's what you need to know in 3 minutes and 55 seconds. A question was asked about the speed of ships in atmosphere after the 310 changes. John said that although the feeling may feel slower, he pointed out that generally the ships are still flying at 1600 kilometers an hour in most situations. During testing, players will experience the effect of the atmospheric density, which is being modeled. That will affect your top speed. Todd said that the new missions are built as modules, which greatly aids in the future balancing and time that it takes to complete the mission, how hard the mission is, based on the number of players, and in the payout. Future changes will occur as the economy is fleshed out. Splines are new to PTU, and the developers confirmed that there were recent changes to improve the visuals. They're also relaxing the corridor, and they moved the target icon to the beginning of the spline instead of the hangar door to reduce confusion. Todd said that they're evaluating if the splines would also work well on orbiting spaceports. If you deviate from the spline, autopilot takes over, sometimes with catastrophic results. Todd confirmed that internally they're discussing removing the RAWs, relocating the hangars, and other big stroke adjustments. John confirmed that there's a current bug where wind manifests within the hangars also to catastrophic results. John said that they're hoping to fix that before live. The Carrick is a tight fit in some hangars, but John said that it does fit and advised pilots just to fly slower and be more cautious. Todd said in the future, there'll be alternate styles for your Moby GUI and different screens. However, that will only come after the reworked star map. In atmosphere, flying in a straight line seems to be more difficult in 310 but John said that that's probably just the effect of the local weather. In the future, the pilot will decide to risk the big ship or crossload the cargo to a smaller ship for better security. Todd said that laws and punishments were adjusted in 310 to better reflect the crime. In general, he said he's happy with the progress of how it's changed our game experience despite the known bugs. And then he went on to say that Pyro will further refine how important the prison system is. Targets can be selected if they're in visual range, not just in range. John confirmed that the reception was mixed for the targeting. However, they're re-adding some of the original bindings that we're used to, so watch for changes before our live launch. Mild pitching on takeoff isn't intended, but may remain due to other features. Hangar doors will now remain open longer as intended. Todd said that the lateness of the patch had less to do with working at home and more to do with the complexities of the features and bugs. The Vanguard received a nerf and it was said to be handling mostly as intended. VTOL flight in the future may get some tweaking, but the idea of having that full helicopter collective mechanic isn't part of the future plan. High-speed combat has two main effects in 310 when flying over SCM. Locking missiles will take very long and auto gimbals become sloppy. They did not add shield reduction or weapon accuracy nerfs because they didn't add to the value of dogfighting. The new pips are compromised by desync and the player rolling the craft, but John said that the closer you are, the more accurate the pips are, and he doesn't plan any major changes before live. John did say that they were looking into drop shadows for HUD elements and also dynamic brightness. Proxy Assist draws a bubble around the ship and tries to pilot the ship opposite to the obstacle. Bartenders are laggy and often break immersion. Animations need to be adjusted and the back end needs tweaks which are being done in the PTU. Being irradiated, being poisoned, being sick and being drunk are all being added to actor status but not in 310. The plushy toy Pico should persist. Day-night temperature changes were confirmed as being calculated based on the distance to the star. John said that player actors will in the future correctly represent temperature changes for examples such as opening the Carrick Bay during a snowstorm. Todd confirmed that guns in Star Citizen are actually for killing. Chris likes rounded engines because they look cooler. John is proud of the turret changes. Todd is proud of the updated UI. And Todd said that if there's a wipe for live, it'll be global, but they haven't yet decided. That's it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.